For the first time, some people displaced by Saturday's deadly crane collapse are being allowed back inside their homes tonight. And officials have announced a citywide sweep to make sure there are no more crane-related accidents. The death toll from the collapse is now seven. It was Saturday when the 200-foot structure came crashing down. City officials say a collar anchoring the crane to the building fell. Off balance, the crane tipped, hitting a 19-story building on 51st Street, then snapped. The top portion flipped over, demolishing a four-story townhouse on 50th Street. It's terrible. It's bad for the families and every, you know, it hits us all. It hits us all. Grieving workers watched on as three more bodies were pulled from the rubble, bringing the death toll to seven. Santino Galone, a crane worker from Belmore, leaves behind his wife and new baby. The second man found is believed to be crane worker Clifford Camzona. The third victim is believed to be Odin Torres, a Florida woman who was visiting her boyfriend. The day of the accident, four construction workers were found. Wayne Blydner from Pelham, Aaron Stevens from the Bronx, Anthony Mazza from Staten Island, and Brad Cohen from Farmingdale. We couldn't find better guys, better mechanics, better men. Just couldn't. The loss is touching so many that evident here as strangers to the men ended their day with a prayer. Every year, thousands of construction workers are seriously injured in New York City. Construction workers find themselves confronted by dangerous, unsafe work conditions on a daily basis. New York State has enacted laws and regulations to protect all workers. However, these laws and regulations can be very difficult for the injured worker to navigate without the help of experienced construction lawyers. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines and safety on the job. John Delaporta's story to examine how Vito Canavo, a member at Sullivan, Papain, Block, McGrath, and Canavo, successfully got justice for John Delaporta. On March 15, 2008, at 2.22 in the afternoon, John Delaporta sustained serious personal injuries on the job when a crane collapsed at a construction site located at 303 East 51st Street, New York. John fell with a crane onto a building on 51st Street. Upon impact, the top portion of the crane flipped over, demolishing a townhouse on 50th Street. As a result, John was buried for hours until the rescue team found him. His co-workers on the crane were killed. John was the only one on the crane that survived. He suffered major extensive injuries and was hospitalized and underwent multiple surgeries. He was confined to bed for months following the occurrence except for needed medical care and treatment. Today he's in pain, all day, every day. He tries to be happy, but he often feels miserable, dealing with a great deal of guilt for being the one that survived and trying to figure out why. The Insider Exclusive takes an inside look at how Vito Canavo successfully settled this devastating construction accident case for John. Vito's law firm, sometimes dubbed Lawyers with Hard Hats, have a long and proud tradition of representing laborers of all kinds who have been injured on the job. They are well versed in labor law and have recovered millions of dollars on behalf of injured workers. The firm has also represented union and non-union workers, laborers, electricians, carpenters, sheet metal workers, plumbers, iron workers, and steam fitters. They also represent documented as well as undocumented workers. Vito has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in New York and in the nation. His goals, not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that similar accidents don't ever happen again. He makes sure juries understand how injuries can truly devastate a person's personal and professional life. Remember, he won't be outworked and he will not rest until justice is done for his clients. His success in the courtroom speaks for itself. His amazing courtroom skills and headline grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from New York.
It is my great pleasure to introduce Vito Canabo to the show. Welcome to the show, Vito. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. Tell our audience a little bit about the type of law your law firm practices. Well, here at Sullivan Papain, uh, Block, McGrath, and Canabo, we are personal injury lawyers. We represent victims of accidents, victims of malpractice, victims of uh, construction site accidents. Uh, we're there to protect people who really don't have a voice and uh, need someone to uh, present their uh, case for them and protect their rights. Mm -hmm. When you first became a lawyer, you could have gone to work maybe for IBM, been a corporate lawyer on the other side of the fence. Why did you decide to represent the little people? Well, I actually was a corporate lawyer for a while. I did corporate litigation for uh, four years at one of the preeminent firms in New York City. I wanted to represent people. I have my background was uh, with working people. I had jobs that uh, I related well to working people. And I thought that uh, the victims that we uh, represent uh, fit my personality best because I can help them most. I could speak for them and I could uh, make their lives different uh, if they're in a situation that needed my help. Mm -hmm. The reason we are here today is we are talking about one of the everyday average workers out there, John De La Porta, right? In a horrible accident that he was in. Tell our audience a little bit about who John is. John is one of uh, those heroes that I find in life. And, you know, we, we all have heroes our military, our police, our firefighters, who my firm also represents. And to me, as a trial lawyer, some of the heroes that I uh, love to represent are the everyday working people like John Della Porter. John uh, was one of those individuals who uh, learned a trade, a very specialized field of crane erecting and performed a very dangerous task well. Uh, John uh, was one of those people who had the courage to go up on uh, buildings, uh, erecting uh, tower ladders, hundreds of feet in the air. And mm -hmm. as I told John when I represented him, I said, John, I'm proud of you. I'm proud to be your lawyer because you're doing something that no lawyer that I know would ever want to do, climb those ladders. So John and his uh, crew of uh, uh, workers on this particular incident uh, were all skilled people. Uh, they knew their job. They were proud of what they did. And uh, when this accident happened, I understood what it meant to him, his family, and his co-workers uh, to try to represent them and protect their interests. Mm -hmm. And tell our audience a little bit about that accident. That accident uh, was something that was completely avoidable, uh, first of all. Uh, it involved the tower crane that was being used at a construction site on East 51st Street. John and the crew that was erecting the crane, and as the building was going up, so was the crane uh, rising with it. And on this particular day, they were performing an operation known as jumping the crane, where basically they were adding additional levels to the crane so it can go up. John and the crew were on the crane. Uh, unfortunately, um, during the operation, one of the collars, one of the supports for the crane came loose and proceeded to fall down the uh, levels of the crane, taking out the supports that were in place. The crane fell. John and the members uh, of his crew fell with the crane. Uh, most of them were killed except for John. John uh, had the unfortunate uh, tragedy uh, unfold before him in that he was alive as the crane fell. He was aware of what was happening. Somehow he landed in a building adjacent to it, still alive, but crushed under the debris and managed somehow, uh, and with the injuries that he sustained, was still in wonderment as to how John survived. Mm -hmm. But he then wakes up under the debris, realizing that he is alive, but no one knows where he is. And John sustained the most traumatic injuries from head to toe that you could imagine. Uh, he somehow survived and is here, fortunately, to tell the story and still to take care of his, uh, his wife and, and family. Uh, while his co-workers uh, did not survive. Right. And they also left families uh, behind, and John feels very strongly about that and that he re recollects very clearly the events of that day and somehow managed to survive. And we're going to have him on in a, in a few minutes, but before we have him on, I want to talk a little bit about the law and the challenges and what issues you were faced in the city of New York, because the city of New York is rather unique it protects its construction workers really well. What were the challenges and the issues that you faced in pro uh, prosecuting this case and getting justice for John? Well, but for that law, and it's called the labor law of the state of New York, it protects uh, workers such as John uh, throughout the state. 
Uh, there were two sections in particular that applied here, Section 240 of the Labor Law and Section 241.6, uh, as we call it. Those provisions require the owner and the general contractor and those people in charge of the construction site to provide these workers a safe place to work. Right. And it's important that they're there because they protect the workers in the situation where the worker would not have the control or the ability uh, to provide himself and his fellow workers mm -hmm. with the uh, proper work environment. Mm -hmm. The challenges we faced here was that we had to show uh, something to demonstrate to the courts that Labor Law Section 240 and uh, Labor Law 241.6 as, as a periphery were violated. So we went about the job of investigating the reasons for this crane collapsing, and what we determined was it was simply a faulty design from the get-go. It should not have been erected that way, yeah. uh, but yet it was, was done basically to uh, you know, move this job along. Yeah, so basically it makes it easier to hold the contractor responsible, correct? It does. Whether the design of the machinery or the tool that they're using is defective, they are ultimately responsible, aren't they? They are ultimately responsible. The law gives them the impetus and the reason for making sure that it's safe, but ultimately they are responsible, and that's why the law is so important to protecting these workers. Um, and this law is, as I've mentioned to you, is unique, I think, in America. I think only in this state do they have such strong construction laws. New York is uh, the leader in protecting workers in that regard. And uh -huh. this law is unique in that regard. And it, it shows in cases such as this how important it is. Well, good job. We have with us John today, and we're going to bring him on right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce John Delaporta to the show. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. Take our audience back to the day, the time when that accident happened. You were on the crane. What do you remember, if anything? I remember the crane just uh, moments before, seconds before it actually uh, started to fall. Um, I noticed, I realized it was going to fall. I realized how far up I was and that it was not a survivable fall. You were 20 stories out, weren't you? Correct. I, I took a just about a 21 story, 200, a little over 200 foot fall, yeah. uh, clear over to 50th Street. We were working on 51st Street. I was up so high that I fell and landed just close, uh, just inward of the sidewalk on 50th Street. Um, do, you among, remember, do you remember the fall? No, sir. Not, uh, the fall I don't remember. I remember just moments before the fall and, and then afterwards and uh, get, getting back to that. Uh, uh, I remember the, the crane beginning to lean and then uh, realizing I, in a state of confusion and, and disbelief that uh, my life was going to end r right then and there. I was sure of it. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was very confusing uh, and when horrible. It was a very horrible experience to have to uh, realize your fate is only moments. The you know your mortality is very real and when, it's only moments away. At that moment, what went through your mind in terms of you're married, right? Correct. I'm you, married. Two you have children. Two children. Did that come into your mind, and um, or was it just? Nope. It was uh, just it. a complete state of uh, disbelief and and confusion, and. Uh, just a horrible, um, just a horrible thought that my life was going to end within the next few seconds. Yes. You landed on a building. Yes, that you, was. Do you one remember of the that? We landed do you on. remember that? No, I don't remember any of the fall itself, uh, and it was quite a fall the crane took. It did uh, be, break into two different pieces, and uh, the piece that I was still clinging to did an actual somersault in the air and um, and landed on top of a four-story building, uh, crushing that to the ground. And I was found uh, underneath that rubble uh, alive uh, about 40 minutes after the crane. How much rubble was on you? I, do, I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh, how much. I, I only know that... Uh, there was a quick response from a some sort of New York City uh, Police Department uh, specialized team that was happened to be right in the area, and uh, they were quickly to respond to the accident. And 
They were able to find me uh, by a limb of some sort that was sticking out of the ground. I remember uh, I had woken up when I fell and landed. I couldn't believe I was still alive, first of all. I didn't understand that. And then second of all, I realized that now that I'm alive, I'm going to die right here in this pile because of all the noise and destruction that was around me. Uh, it was unfathomable uh, how someone was going to find me here. What I, I thought I was screaming at, my, at the top of my deflated lungs, but that was not the case. I was soon to learn, uh, I was to learn afterwards that it was just murmurs that were coming out. Um, I had suffered extensive injuries uh, and it hurt uh, incredibly so uh, to try and move and dislodge myself from wherever it, it was that I, that I lay. And uh, I do remember uh, the rescuers coming on scene and uh, talking to me and uh, uh, telling me everything's going to be okay uh, and that they were going to get me out of there. And um, I was uh, lucid enough to give them my brother's phone number, my brother Michael, who works in the same industry as I do. Uh, fortunately enough for me and him, the uh, fellow we were working for that day had, was busy enough that the crews got split apart. And he was doing the same thing I was doing, but just downtown, the same very day. Had, had he not been so, so busy, most likely my brother and I would have been working together on the same crane. Yeah. And uh, the odds of both of us surviving would have been uh, extremely high. So, How many people fell with that crane? Seven people fell. And you are the only one that survived. And I was the only one to survive, yes. And today, how do you think about that? It's I extremely uh, hard. Uh, I try to live my life in a way to sort of honor. And those men who passed away, and because I feel uh, if I don't, live a good life, then I should have been, I should have perished that day and somebody else should have had the opportunity to, to live a life of fulfillment with their families. And so it's very difficult. Uh, it's a very difficult concept for some people to understand, but. Um, Do you ever, are you ever in touch with their families at all? Um, not on a regular occasion, not, not regularly, no. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody, uh, I guess, who just wants to move on. And yeah. um, there are uh, some people that I, I do talk to, uh, but not on a regular basis, no. Right. When I talk to your lawyer, Vito, he describes you as his hero. Mm. Why do you think he thinks that? I don't know. It's certainly not the way I feel. Uh, <laughs> heroes to me are people like Vito who protect... Yeah. the rights of uh, workers like myself and step up to the plate when need be, when, uh, when we're unsure of which road to travel down to uh, be able to have our families compensated for uh, the losses that we are going to endure financially, physically, mentally, uh, having people like Vito Canavo and, and his law firm uh, I, I'll reverse that rule right back to him and, and, and call him my hero because uh, and, uh, he spoke up for me when I didn't know how to speak up for myself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with that term at all. Yeah. How has your life changed today and what are some of the challenges you face? Well, my life is very uh, difficult. Uh, as opposed to what some people may think. Uh, I'm a young fella. Uh, who has time on his hands to enjoy his children, his wife, his family. Uh, but I still feel, I still have a deep sense of pride and integrity, uh, which makes me want to get back to work and be 
the provider for my family again and, and, and fill that role in, in some way. And um, it's been difficult to figure out just how to do that. Um, so my life ha has changed today. Uh, if I could take March 15th, 2008 back, uh, I would take it, I would gladly take it back and, and, and uh, because my life was going so well at that time. Uh, prior to the accident, I had uh, reached a pinnacle of my career in, in my chosen career and uh, uh, was financially doing well and, and uh, was able to be a good provider for my family. And that was taken out from under me quite literally in a moment of seconds and, and just in just in just seconds and uh, my life hasn't been all that easy mm -hmm. I want to thank you very very much for sharing your strength your courage and your experience with us thank you you're welcome Vito, let's talk a little bit about uh, the construction laws in, in the state of New York and people who are injured. If you're a construction worker and you're injured, what should you immediately do? First, you should immediately contact a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, you should be in touch with someone who can protect your rights. What are your rights? As a worker, you have the right to a safe work environment. You are supposed to be provided with all of the tools, the equipment, and the safety operations that will protect you from getting injured or killed on a work site. Um, I have talked to workers who are, let's say, not happy with the way their current lawyer may be handling a case. Do they have the right to switch lawyers? Clients always have the right to switch lawyers. They always have the right to find a lawyer that they uh, feel is uh, mm -hmm. most suitable for their situation. Mm -hmm. In cases like this, oftentimes there are damages that are awarded, punitive damages. Or do they apply here? Punitive damages are uh, difficult in New York to uh, recover. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why it's important that uh, the compensatory damages that we can recover are uh, available to them. Oftentimes, insurance companies will contact the injured worker and want to take a statement. What do you recommend they do? I recommend that they do not speak to the insurance company or any of its representatives. Uh, they should instead speak to an attorney who will represent their interests. Right. The insurance company is adverse to them from the start, and it is never a good idea for any person injured in an accident to speak to the insurance company representative without consulting a lawyer. Yeah, and I've often found that when you give a statement to an insurance company, they write it down the way they hear it. That which, sometimes does happen all which, too often, Steve, and it's never in your interest exactly, in the end. Exactly. I want to thank you very much for sharing this case on this show, and thank you for being on the program. You did a great job. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.